That was a weird experience. Hi, my name's Mike, and I want to thank you for visiting myradiologyedu.com. If you're watching this video, you probably have some questions about MRI, or you're preparing to have an MRI study yourself. This video goes over the basic MRI experience. If you have any other questions, feel free to visit our MRI Q&A tab or email me directly at mike at myradiologyedu.com. Properly preparing for your MRI exam will save you a lot of time and frustration. Due to the fact that each MRI unit contains a very strong magnet, you'll want to come with the least amount of removable metal as possible. This includes sunglasses, keys, wallet, cell phone, bobby pins, jewelry, etc. Anything else you do bring, the technologist will have you lock up before the exam. It also makes sense to wear loose-fitting clothing without any metal although many institutions will have you changed into a fashionable gown like this anyway. If you happen to have any implanted devices such as aortic valves, stents, pacemakers, insulin pumps, etc., try to bring some identifying information about the implant. Many times a surgeon will give you a card with a make and model of the implant. If you don't have this, many institutions will actually turn you away for your study. If you have any questions about it, Call the institution you're going to, speak to the tech or the radiologist. Or, of course, you can always email me, mike at myradiologyedu.com. Try to get to your MRI appointment at least 15 minutes ahead of time. When you get there, the front desk team will have you fill out some paperwork. This will include some demographic information about yourself, payment information, and also an MRI screening form. When you're done all this, the technologist will take you back go over some additional information, and probably do some more MRI screening. If you need films or a CD after your study, this would be a good time to ask. Each MRI looks a little bit different, but technically they all work the same. A lot of people ask, where's my head going to be during the exam? But it really depends on what kind of exam you're having done. For example, if you're having a brain MRI, your head's gonna be right in the middle of the magnet. Conversely, if you're having a foot MRI, your foot's going to be in the middle of the magnet. So your head's going to be almost all the way out and almost always outside of the tube. MRIs are extremely loud. You may be hearing the cooling system right now chirping, but during your exam, there's going to be a lot of loud banging noises. Each institution should offer some form of hearing protection. Typically, this comes in the form of earplugs which actually work really well when you use them correctly. Some places also offer headphones. The best bet to protect your hearing is actually to use both. One of the most important aspects of MRI quality is for you to hold very still for your exam. Although this sounds easy, most people have a very hard time with it. That means you gotta hold still from your nose to your toes. But that will make sure that you have the best quality for your exam and it will also eliminate the technologist having to perform repeat sequences, causing your exam to be longer than it needs to be. Most routine MRI exams take between 20 and 30 minutes to complete. Some specialty studies, such as cardiac MRI or MRI neurograms, may take a little bit longer. If your doctor ordered contrast for your study, plan on adding about another 15 minutes to the total time. Since MRIs have no radiation, you're good to go after your exam. MRIs can be a daunting experience, but having the tools and knowledge beforehand can make it a better experience overall.